Hey, so I know I've been gone for a little while, and the reason for that is, uh, well, I told you previously that I wasn't really happy with any of the videos that I made, and so I kind of just stopped. But I didn't count on anyone noticing that I had gone, um, so thanks for anyone that messaged me. Uh, it's a nice bucketing wet day here in Perth, which is pretty rare. I mean, I'm always saying this place is apocalyptically bright because 90% of the time it's bright and sunny. And I always say it's apocalyptically bright because Perth is basically built on sand. If you dig here, uh, you're not going to come down to like soil or mud or dirt. You just get into sand, basically. And that sand reflects off the sunlight. So on a bright sunny day, it's just apocalyptically bright. Uh, I gotta go get some groceries, and I thought I'd just give you guys a hello, what's up, and um, see what's happening. As you can see, yeah, I still got vision, yeah, it's still driving. Douchebag. Um, yeah, it's still my daily driver, like, it sits in the garage, and I have absolutely tried to film stuff uh, previously. Which way should I go? I'll go this way, actually. Um, <clears throat> so, this car parks in an underground garage, two stories underground, and I really like to film stuff. I like doing stuff, you know, little things that make my car perfect. Uh, the trouble is, the garage downstairs is really dark, and it's on one of those automatic timed light things, so every 30 seconds or so, it will just stop uh, and switch the lights off and so you'll be working on the car down there doing something and then it'll just turn dark and in order to get the lights on again uh, you have to walk out to there's sensors all over the garage but for some reason the the only one that works is right by the elevator so you have to crawl out from underneath the car walk all the way to the elevator wave your arms up in the air and then the lights will come on and then you walk back and then you've got like 30 seconds to see and a couple of things that I actually I'm going to show you me because there's an update and I warn you guys uh, let's address the elephant in the room here I have a moustache now so just something that you should know um, yeah so I've done some detective work on this car actually in the past few months uh, and remember when I tried polishing out the headlight on the passenger side and I said that it, it couldn't really be polished out because the yellowing was on the inside of the light. Well, it turns out I was wrong. Um, I, I looked at like the before and after photos and it's only the passenger side that has a yellowed headlight. And of course this has aftermarket headlights on it. Um, what I realized was it was only the passenger side and when I looked at the before and after photos, the after photos looked much better than before and I took them in the same lighting and the same place and everything and so there was a marked improvement just from polishing it um, but it needed it definitely needs something a bit more than that um, and just keep that in mind as I move on to the next thing so I was under the car poking around I think I was giving an oil change in the garage as usual with the flashlight and um, I noticed that there were just a few specks of rust coming up on the body, on the floor of the car. So not on the, the subframe or the suspension components and things like that, because that's all been painted black. Um, and it, I, I'm not dumb enough to think that the black paint that's on there at the moment is factory. Someone's obviously painted that. But from the factory, the, the van, just like any other car, would have been dunked in a big vat of primer and then pulled out and then the body gets painted all of the bolt-on components are already painted and gets bolted onto it so the only part that remains in primer is that gray bit underneath the car the actual body of the car itself and it was starting to get just a couple of spots of rust on it not bubbling not flaking just a few specks and this car we've made the decision definitely to go back to New Zealand now which is probably one of the dumbest things we're going to do in our lives but I'm not known to be very intelligent um, and so we're taking the car with us in New Zealand cars have to get a warrant of fitness or a mechanical inspection every six months it's really stupid especially considering the minuscule size of the country and you go to it's all privatized as well you go to a tire shop he'll tell you you need a tire 
you go to another shop, there'll be a wall of like universal CV boots from like China, the cheapest, nastiest stuff. And they make money that way because people don't understand. And they, they'll just come out and tell everyone, oh, you need a new CV boot, you need a new CV boot, $75. They'll rip the nice OEM CV boot off uh, and just put one of those clip ones on. No grease, no touching the wheel bearings, nothing else, just as half ass as possible to make some money. So um, there are places you can go, like the actual testing place that doesn't do any mechanical repairs. They will inspect it. If it passes, they'll put the sticker on and put it on the system. If it fails, they'll just give you an advisory of everything that needs to be replaced. Um, but then that place, you know, they'll open the door and they'll be like, <gasps> a French fry, that's a fail. Uh, someone could slip on that french fry french fry could cause mold and you could die you know they're just like way too anal about things um and i don't want them to start picking and prodding at the rust i'm sure they won't because it was so minuscule on this so i decided to paint the entire underbody i found this um really good coating it's uh if you're watching this in america which most of you are you're not going to be able to get it because it's here in Australia and New Zealand, Motortech underbody coating. It's really cheap, seven bucks a can. Um, it's bituminous, so it's and it comes out textured like uh, sandpaper. It's basically the road. It's the road that you're spraying on the car. It's not rubberized, which is horrible. It dries to like a, a rough, um, solid text, uh, sandpaper texture. And I decided to clean all that up. But while I was doing all that cleaning, right at the front here, in front of the front um, passenger wheel on the the bottom I found um, a little bit of like bubbling behind some black paint that someone had painted over it and I found it to be wet and I pushed onto that those little bubbles and I could just feel crunching behind it and I thought oh shit someone's just really done a half ass job at trying to cover up rust on this thing and so while I was painting the rest of the underbody I got a wire wheel onto it and like sanded it all back and the paint was just flying off and I picked up clumps of the paint and the back of the paint was rusty um, but when I looked at the metal on the car there was no rust on it at all it was just perfect so what had happened was there was moisture collecting there um, and someone just decided to paint it at some point uh, a few years ago by the looks of it and just trapped the moisture behind the paint so the paint didn't stick properly and that moisture started to rust and cause the bubbling. So I cleaned all that up and um, painted that little area as well. I've done the whole car now, all the bash plates, protective panels, uh, front and back. I left all the subframe and everything just painted. So I didn't put that rough bituminous coating on it, um, but it's all protected underneath now. And that way that's all good. Um, but yeah, so that was on the front left side, the front uh, left side or passenger side um, driver's light not driver's light, headlight is the one that was yellowed. Then on the roof of the car, I was poking around as you do. I think I was washing it. And I noticed a few specks of rust coming up on that um, rain gutter, the rain channel. Uh, but again, only on the passenger side. Uh, nothing in like the middle of the roof or even towards the passenger side, right on that gutter. And so I uh, sanded that off. I masked it up. I brushed it off with uh, a bit of what you may call it, um, rust converter. And then I paint it over it. It's not the tidiest, cleanest, most professional job. Again, I don't have a garage to work on things properly. It's, and that's why I don't make videos because I don't really have anywhere to go and film. Like you, you've seen my videos. Every time I go to a park or like somewhere secluded and try and film something, some idiot will find me and just park like next to me or just come and stand there watching me. It's really awkward. And um, I hate people so it sucks um, but yeah I fixed up the roof and it led me to realize something my bit of detective work is that wherever this thing parked in Japan uh, the driver's side was sheltered so I'm not sure if it parked up against like a building or something with like a little lean-to um, or in a carport where the passenger side was exposed to sunlight and to rain but it's the passenger side that got all the brunt of everything um, so I've basically cleaned all that up now um, With that being said uh, What else have I done to it? Oh, I switched engine oil. Uh, so I gave it an oil change. That's all it needed um, And I used to run 10w40 and I know most of you guys don't really care about this stuff But there's someone that probably does 
I used to run 10W40, uh, full synthetic heavy duty diesel made by Newlon here, very expensive, comes in a beautiful purple and gold packet. Um, the trouble is, I don't know what's going on up here, but the trouble is, um, well there was no trouble with the oil at all. I changed it, I dropped it at 9,000 kilometers I think, and it was quite foamy, uh, which I hadn't really seen on a, a diesel engine oil before. Um, but that could possibly be because I didn't run the engine before I dropped the oil. I let the car sit overnight. So I used to be the guy who would run the engine, get the engine oil warm, and then drain it. But now I'm like, if I leave it sitting overnight, every little ounce of used engine oil is going to drip from the valve train, from all the little galleries and everything, all the way into the sump. So I'll be collecting everything. If I run it, it's all going to run through the system, and some of it's still going to be sticking to components. So... I changed my methodology on that, but it was a little bit foamy, I didn't like it, and because I'm a car nerd, so I never recommend to you guys just hearsay, things that I hear, like I don't listen to the guy screaming down the road saying synthetic oil ruined his marriage or something, you know, the people like that, that just recycle information, like I've been in the industry and I've been around and I had that passion for cars for so long that I actually research stuff, because it's interesting to me, and um, I was looking up uh, the spec sheet for engine oils and I looked at the old oil that I used to use in my Land Cruisers and stuff which is Penrite 10W40 um, semi-synthetic and I was surprised that the Penrite had a much higher TBN or total base number than the full synthetic Neulon. I thought the full synthetic would have a much higher number but it didn't and so TBN is a total base number. It shouldn't be the only measure you go by when it comes to picking an engine oil, uh, but it's a really good indicator of the quality of an engine oil. So uh, basically TBN or total base number is the oil's ability to resist oxidation. Um, and oxidation happens when you're like going for little drives and stuff like this. You park the car up and the, as the oil drips off, the metal exposed metal components will start to rust not badly like if you open a diff cover like a rear diff cover from a car that's been parked up for a couple of days you'd notice that the half that's sitting above the oil um, would have like minor surface rust on it kind of like brake brake this you see them parked up and if you leave them for a couple of days you'll see little specks of rust on it that and um, as part of the diesel combustion cycle the soot in the oil can basically turn it to, or cause it to become acidic the higher the TBN the more resistant it is to having that acidity affect the oil's lifespan. So essentially higher TBN number, the longer the service life of the oil. A really good oil from, from the packet fresh would have a TBN of about 8.2 to 9.5. Um, the Newlon had a TBN of, I, I believe it was 9.8, which was really good. And then I looked up the specs for my old oil, the Penrite 50, uh, 10W40 semi-synthetic. That had a TBN of 11.8, or it was 11 point something. So much higher. And I guess that reflects on the price because the Penrite is a pretty expensive oil. And I remember I never had an issue with any of my Land Cruisers or previous diesels running that. So I basically just switched uh, back to that and the car's been running perfectly fine ever since. I love this rain. We never get rain. Not consistently, at least. I say that now, but the minute I get to New Zealand, a month later, I'll be like, oh man, it's so rainy, it's so dark and gloomy, it's humans, right? We're never happy, never satisfied. Uh, so speaking of these headlights again, um, I will try and film what I do to them. I'm going to sand them back, wet sand them, and then I'll coat them. Uh, that should sort them out. I've had a few people asking me um, where they can get these headlights, and previously I said I don't know uh, the period correct, but I found them. So if you want, I can get them and ship them out to you. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure of pricing and stuff yet. Uh, they won't be cheap, but they won't be expensive either. Um, probably about three, three fifty US for the pair, uh, and they'll only fit this shape, so the middle shape, the best shape, uh, which is like, I think it's August 96, 
uh, up to sometime 99. And why am I parking so close? Because uh, I want to get some shots of the car for you guys. Um, also, uh, I've started a shop selling high ace parts. And that was only because I would get people uh, messaging me from all over the world, basically. Um, like Jamaica and stuff, asking where they can get an air filter or they don't want to drill holes into the air filter like I once did, which I agree it's not the best thing to do in the world because as soon as you put a hole into it, you know, air takes a path of least resistance. It will compromise the air filter. You will get, um, what you may call it, dust and grit. Uh, and because it sucks from right, right at the bottom, that's where all the dust and grit settles. So you will get dust and grit basically coming into uh, the intake just from that tiny little gap, unless you put like silicon or sealant around it, um, or you put like a washer or something, or you make sure you drill the smallest possible hole that's needed. And pretty soon you're gonna eat out your turbocharger, uh, and it's obviously not ideal. Um, so I thought, with all these questions that I get and all these requests, like, do you know if there's a cross-reference for this, there's a cross-reference for that, and then I was I was stalking the highest North America page, um, and for a while, every day, there was, like, people saying, can I get brake shoes, can I get brake pads, uh, yeah, the brake pads you sent me don't fit, the brake shoes don't fit, um, to someone who sells a few parts there, and someone says, um, Oh, this oil filter is compatible. You can use this oil filter. And then someone else will comment, like a couple of people commented like, no, don't use that oil filter because I did. And a few miles down the road, um, it basically burst. Uh, because it wasn't designed for a diesel, it burst. And just started spewing diesel out, lost oil pressure, could have cost you an engine. And so my idea was, if I could uh, start a shop, source parts from around the world, and especially going back to New Zealand where these have been forever, um, and get all the bits that people need, find the best price, buy, buy it in bulk, and then I can ship it from one shop. So whatever you need. If you need like the windscreen surround, um, or even glass panels, like if you want a windscreen, or a tailgate glass, or a sunroof piece of glass, most places won't ship it and I've had um, insurance companies asking in North America was it State Farm I can't remember but basically they, they were planning on riding off cars after they got a smashed windscreen which I can completely understand uh, because yeah a windscreen is not a big deal but as an insurance company they don't want their staff sitting around um, calling up places around the world like Japan and saying, hey, can you guys send us a windscreen for this car? And hoping it's the right windscreen, putting their customer in a rental car, waiting three weeks for that windscreen to show up, trying to convince a workshop to fit that windscreen, and then finding out it's the wrong windscreen. And then they have to go through the process again. They would much rather just write the car off and sell it on to someone who will sort it out themselves and pay their customer out whatever is owed to them. And so, I had the idea if I could just compile every single component for this car um, and a few others but I wanted to do everything so basically if you wanted to restore this thing from the ground up I wanted to have everything and uh, if you just wanted to maintain it I put together a few really good kits so like annual service kits um, complete maintenance kits things like that just so that you could just shop from one place and I got some pretty good shipping deals from Sandal um, using our Shopify site then I decided no I'm going to stop buying parts um, because I sold a few things through Instagram before the shop opened and that was the annual service kit once I opened the shop and admittedly I only have filters and brakes at the moment uh, I haven't I've had a lot of interest in people looking but no one's actually bought anything and I do not want to spend all of my money which I should be saving to go back to New Zealand on buying components and parts for this thing, storing them up, stacking them up in the hopes that someone's gonna buy it. And if someone doesn't, well, I'm sitting around with, you know, six windscreen panels for this car. 
if you know what I mean. So I'm going to wait until I get some customers buying some parts of me and once I can see that yeah sales are coming through and that it is viable and worth my time uh, I will then start to acquire a complete cat uh, catalogue of parts for this thing. I also forgot to mention actually that part of the reason that I stopped making videos is um, when I first started I was out there like saying hey guys uh, I, I hate people that do that when you click on a video you've just seen the thumbnail and you just want to see what that video is about right and some punk comes on the screen you've never seen him before you don't have any idea who he is you don't care about him and he's like what's up everybody make sure you like the video make sure you subscribe make sure you do all this stuff and I'm like yo I just want to watch the video man I don't know who you are I don't want to subscribe so I actually tried doing that because in order to become a YouTube partner or they say partner to monetize your videos you have to have um, at least a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time so I've got the watch time but I've never had the subscribers and I don't like asking people to subscribe and stuff because I just want people to subscribe only if they like the videos and potentially what I might be able to produce in the future even though my videos at the moment suck um, so I can't monetize my videos but that doesn't stop YouTube playing ads on my videos it's super annoying like even I'll go to go watch like another video of mine to see if I have footage of that or something to use for something else and I'll have to sit through like two ads on my own damn video um, so that was another reason that I stopped making YouTube videos but I don't really care about that stuff anymore I don't care about subscribers or uh, making money from YouTube I like this car and it seems like you guys like it too so thanks so much for watching and um, thanks for your time see ya